Hello, hello, hello. I'm, I'm hello. if everything is okay. Uh, there are some people already online. Uh, and I'm checking if it's recording. Yeah, I guess it's recording. So, hello. This is Mateusz from uh, almost Warsaw. I live 15 kilometers away from Warsaw, Poland. And uh, thank you for being here. This is my absolutely first one online uh, webinar. So please excuse if everything, if anything goes wrong, that's me. Um, well, the first things that are happening are the toughest one they say. So, well, I have produced and prepared a, a really quick uh, presentation for you. And I would like to show this to you and then I will ask some questions during this um, presentation and I will show you the a short movie and uh, the movie is also um, like this movie is also a, the answer to one of my uh, uh, to one of these questions and I hope that this movie really explain explains uh, very well uh, what I'm talking about so thank you for being here this is absolutely first webinar from the Concrete Injection Made Easy uh, lunch time uh, in, uh, in May. So uh, my name is Mateusz Furs. I run uh, Inblock, that is a service um, company. Uh, I started my business in 2013. And this year, 2013, was still considered to be this uh, tough time, uh, the crisis time. Uh, so I told to myself that if I manage to start my business in the crisis time and uh, then, uh, you know, the situation will uh, improve and I will be already on, uh, on market. So that was my idea. I really started. Uh, before that, I was laid off from my previous company. I spent there almost two, year, two years uh, and I was their uh, product manager for injections and this made me this idea what injections is all about i found it very interesting fascinating and uh, yeah that's that was my goal to really uh, to start a business and do it uh, on my uh, on my own this year very special year difficult year strange year uh, i have uh, like an idea to start the podcast because everyone was saying that you have to be online right and i mean online business is growing we buy things online i bought this uh, this phone online as well and i got it delivered to my home so um we do it all all day but our brand our injection and construction uh, brand is different i mean we don't we can't we can't uh, inject any resin any resin into the crack without really being there on site but we can learn we can really learn and exchange our knowledge um, online. Many companies, many producers do it really all the time. So, uh, so that's it. Um, yeah, mm, let me hit it once again. Okay, so uh, this is me. This is my company in blog and this is podcast. Uh, what I prepared for today is that at the first I will answer some questions that you have been asking since the podcast launch. Then I will show you, while answering these questions, I will show you this video compilation of why open packers give you a huge control over what you do on site. And then I will say how you will get your free copy of this core principles for effective crack injection. And if we have time, then uh, I will also try, if I know the answer, answer your questions. So uh, let's jump to the, to the first question. What you see here is, uh, I need to remove this because I don't like it. Okay, so one of the first questions uh, I got just after I started my uh, podcast was, why I really insist in you know using packers that are uh, that the, the diameter of there is uh, 10 millimeters because there are still markets around the world 
uh, they uh, that use 14. The millimeter, the diameter of the injection packer is 14. That, that's the one, the aluminium packer you can see in, in this picture. So um, I have to say that when I started this business in 2014, and even earlier when I was working for my uh, previous uh, employer company, uh, yeah, I have to admit that. 13 one three millimeter diameter packer was the standard one everyone uh, was using this uh, and we like if we say that we have to buy packers we meant we have to buy packers of 13 millimeters yeah but then uh, when i started my own business uh, when i started to drill uh, these holes in concrete on my own uh, I thought to myself that it's, you know, it has to be something, I have to change it because it really takes time uh, to drill these holes of 14 millimeters. And, you know, I was hitting uh, rebars all the time. So I felt this strong need to drill smaller holes, drill smaller holes, because I was hitting steel bars all the time. And I was really destroying the concrete uh, all the time. So my first idea was, what if I start to drill smaller hole, like 10, 10 millimeters, and then I will only drill uh, the part of the hole, the first eight, perhaps 10 millimeters uh, that are smaller than, uh, that are smaller than, um, um, than uh, 13 well and yeah that was my first that was my first uh, like you know overcoming uh, information that perhaps i can do it uh, this way anyways later uh, later oh my god i did something wrong okay so but when i realized that I have to first drill 10 millimeters, like 50 holes, and then I have to change the drill bit and drill another 50 times to drill this eight centimeters to be able to install uh, the 13 millimeter packer, I felt there's got to be something else. And so this need of drilling small holes really made me to find another solution and the other solution is 10 millimeter uh, diameter of packer and what does it what does it give me so it gives me the ability to drill faster i really drill faster you know uh, when i use 10 millimeters instead of 13 and i know that some applicators even use the diameter of 14 14 one four millimeters uh, to install the 13 millimeter uh, packer. So this is insane, right? So <clears throat> when I use smaller drill bit, uh, it makes me easier to pass uh, and avoid uh, steel re reinforcements that are uh, hidden in the concrete, or at least it makes less likely to hit it. And then, of course, smaller drill bits are cheaper. So it's not only drilling faster, but they are cheaper. Um, yeah. So this is also the final finance um, advantage. Uh, I destroy less concrete, and uh, yeah, this is something. Uh, perhaps it, 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 it's you know it's strange, but if we are talking about the different volume that different drill bits are produced. Um, then we can save some resin, not only some time, which is most important, <clears throat> but we can save some resin uh, when we drill smaller holes. And I have prepared this Excel sheet. I will try to just show it to you in the moment. Where is it? Uh, okay, that's it. So you should see this, uh, this, this Excel uh, sheet where I have prepared the, <clears throat> and I would like to compare three different diameters of 10, 13 and 14 millimeters and the length. Um, okay, so my average length 
of every single um, of every single uh, of every single hole is around 27 centimeters. So on the basis of this, I can calculate the volume in liters. This is in liters. So of course, it's less than a liter. It's small one. But if we compare the volume uh, of and the hole that is drilled using the 13 millimeters uh, drill bit, it occurs that this hole is bigger than this one of 40, almost 41%. Uh, this is huge, absolutely huge difference. What does it mean? This difference is in our resin consumption, right? We use more resin to fill this hole even before we start to fill the crack. What if we uh, drill uh, using the drill bit of 14 millimeters? Well, the difference is even uh, bigger, almost 39, meaning almost 50% uh, difference. It's, I find it huge. I find it really huge. <clears throat> so if we say that one hole is this amount of uh, resin. So 100 holes is almost 15 liters of resin. Almost 15 liters of resin to be bought and injected just to fill the, uh, just to fill the, the hole. The difference, in, the difference in the volume between the holes of 10 and the hole of 13. This is the difference. So, 1,000 holes, what does it mean? If we are injecting a crack, 1,000 holes means uh, around 125 uh, meters of crack. If we say that we drill, it will drill eight holes per one meter. If we inject into the structure of diaphragm wall, it means that, well, my average is around 25 holes per, per one square meter uh, of this, uh, to inject into the, um, the structure of the wall. So it's uh, 40 <coughs> squares. It's 40 squares, more or less. So coming back to my presentation. So this is the, uh, the difference. And I really think that even though Perhaps, you know, 14 liters of resin is not that much. I really, I still prefer to give this money to my kid rather than spending this uh, and losing money on uh, unwanted uh, loss, which is the consumption of resin. <clears throat> uh, this is it. And uh, we have to remember that the longer hole we drill, the, the bigger difference we, we produce. So if it's not 27 centimeters, but let's say 40, 50 centimeters uh, holes, so the difference and the, and the bigger consumption uh, of resin will be uh, easier to really, uh, you know, uh, observe. And last but not least, but may, maybe sounds funny, but you know, smaller packers and smaller drill bits are, uh, you know, are cheaper and perhaps lighter, so it's there easier to be carry, carried on the, on, on the job site. So <clears throat> that's it. Uh, once again, we have to pass this. Uh, so I, I, as I mentioned all this. So this is my answer to the first question, why I really insist of using uh, the packers of 10 millimeters instead of 13 on even, uh, or even bigger. But we have to admit that I'm talking about crack injection because crack is small. Uh, we don't have to deliver too much resin at one time. So uh, it's really, uh, that's it. Crack is small and we don't have to, really don't have to, uh, you know, push uh, too much resin into the, uh, in, in, using, using this, this, you know, this space in, in, in the packer. Okay, another question. Why do I buy and install packers that are uh, without nipples? Of course, I buy nipples, but I buy them separately. So I in, uh, install attached nipples uh, during the in injection process. 
rather than uh, you know buying the, them attached already. So if you take a look at this picture, you will notice that all of the packers are without uh, nipples and there is resin coming out of the packer from one of them. What does it mean? The resin is on the other side of this, of this wall and I know it and I know it only because uh, I use this kind of packer without nipple. <clears throat> so we can uh, de remove the air from the crack, we can remove uh, the uh, water from the crack or for, from the expansion joint. This is the example of uh, curtain inj injection. This picture is taken uh, two weeks ago in Gdynia. I was uh, preparing, I was making the curtain injection and uh, yeah, I found it interesting to, to show you this. Uh, so, you know, using packers without nipples also uh, makes us uh, to reduce the internal pressure into the structure. It's so important, especially when it comes to, you know, crack injection, when we use rather higher pressure. Okay. And the third one, and one of the most important reasons is that we can really gain insight and uh, we can understand what's really going on inside the structure. We cannot see through it. We cannot, you know, scan it. Uh, we can only use our imagination. We can only understand what we do on the job site. But using open packers really uh, helps us uh, to observe what is going on uh, we can monitor the flow of the resin and understand the degree to which the void is uh, being filled. And this is the moment I would like to show you the uh, short movie, short movie I have prepared just for this occasion. This is the movie, this is the compilation of uh, some job sites of mine. And yeah, so let's do it. The movie is called that open packers really give you control over what you do on uh, your uh, job sites. So this is the first one. This is the structural injection of the top slab. The top slab was uh, the, around 25 to 30 centimeters and it was leaking like from the sponge. No cracks, no voids, no nothing. It was just leaking from the structure of the concrete. And we have produced uh, this technology to really inject it into the structure. We have drilled holes. Uh, and as you can see, there are different packers, all of them open. And one of them, uh, you know, show water. Some of them show uh, resin. Some of them are already uh, injected with the acrylic gel. Acrylic gel, the time of reaction was, was around three minutes, two and a half, three minutes. And as you can see, we inject into the one packer, into the structure of it using our 2K uh, pump, 2K piston pump. And then every single packer shows us a little bit this different story. So we, we know exactly where our acrylic gel arrived, but uh, not, not all this information yet. So this is uh, this uh, curtain injection. This is PU based resin because the space uh, in the behind behind the wall was quite big, and I wanted to sh this this resin to really create some form to fill the gap. And uh, let me come back to this because you know at the beginning nothing was happening, but then here we go. We are removing water from the gap, and. In a second, there was a uh, resin coming. And this is an expansion joint injection. Yeah, we're injecting acrylic gel and the reaction time is around one minute and a half. <clears throat> we wanted uh, the time to be really fast because, because there was uh, water going inside of the expansion joint and I didn't want the the resin to mix with water too much. So I wanted to have this reaction time really fast. And look what happens. We can see this packer. 
uh, that the water was uh, started to um, go through it because we were you know fitting the expansion joint inside with resin to this to this uh, level and now we are starting to inject resin from another packer and the flow increases the flow of water we are removing water from expansion joint and there is no other way to remove uh, water from an expansion joint rather than this so imagine if we use packer with already installed uh, nipples it's impossible to get rid of water from the expansion joint from the inside of it and look at this look at this so the water is flowing we are injecting and bah that's it that's it so the this level is filled this level is filled yeah and the last concrete injection we know it uh, very well uh, almost everyone was uh, of us was present during this kind of uh, injection uh, job this this slab is around 35 centimeter and then you can see some pu based resins uh, that was coming through the crack but observe this packer you can see that the resin is flowing out of it that means that we have filled this uh, this part of um, of the crack so i hope that <clears throat> this short video really uh, explains why using this kind of uh, injection packer without nipple and the nipple later to be installed uh, as the injection process uh, is uh, going on this is really a huge huge advantage uh, on the job site uh, okay now i have something else i would like to explain a little bit about this um, structural injection into the top slab so we had a slab that was you know uh, uh, destroyed uh, and it was filled with water like a sponge and then we have drilled some holes and we have cut uh, cracks and uh, you know this, uh, this this whole concrete and above the concrete was another layer of, of, of concrete floor so some of the resin may stay after the injection process in between of those two uh, concrete um, parts <clears throat> so after we drill the holes we clean them we install packer as you can see at the moment and then we started to inject the resin so the resin is uh, the color red and uh, so after the resin was injected into the hole started to spread in the cracks and in the structure of the concrete itself and uh, we were you know going from one side of this um, sailing to the other one and we as you could see on the video the packers were the holes were you know showing where exactly the the resin was already delivered which is so 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 important this makes you the understanding where you are how the process is going on if the resin uh, is reacting properly uh, and so on and so on okay uh, the third question is why we should mix small amounts of resin i really insist on that all the time i keep saying this like crazy all the time that i encourage my employees to in, in, to mix really small amounts of resin so um, this reduces the risk of har resin hardening inside the pump yeah because if we mix too much resin at one time it may happen <clears throat> so we have to remember that the uh, larger quantity of already mixed resin will absolutely have shorter pot life uh, because the reaction creates the uh, temperature the temperature makes the uh, reaction to go faster if the reaction goes faster it produces more temperature and this is chain reaction that will uh, no absolutely won't stop and there is one more thing this injection pump this is the diaphragm uh, diaphragm uh, pump 
it also produces and creates uh, heat. And this heat is uh, unfortunately uh, warming up the resin itself. So the reaction in the pump will go even faster. <clears throat> so if I use the small hopper like this, you can see this is the plastic used old plastic from like water, Coca-Cola, other beverages. So we can find it everywhere. It's small, so it's like forces us to, to mix small amounts of, uh, of resin. And one more, of course, the viscosity. We, if we are talking and we are talking about uh, crack injection, the vis low viscosity is like number one factor. The lower viscosity is, the easier and faster and using the smaller pressure we can uh, inject the resin into the crack. So uh, at the very beginning of the reaction, when two uh, different uh, subcomponents of, uh, of, of resin are mixed, the, viscos the viscosity is really low. Yeah. But as the reaction goes, the viscosity rises. And then we can have this uh, situation that the viscosity will be so high that it will be oh, nearly impossible to inject it into the fine concrete crack. Uh, and yeah, keep, please keep in mind uh, that the size of the crack is really small. That, as I said before, you, we consume more resin to fill uh, the holes with it rather than to fill the crack. So we really don't have to, uh, you know, mix huge amount of resin at one time, that's it. This is my uh, diaphragm pump uh, with this uh, hopper made of uh, plastic beverage uh, bottle. And there is like two things I would like to highlight at the moment. So of course the, the pump is dirty, I know, uh, the hopper is dirty, but that's the point. If we use uh, this kind of hoppers, we can, you know, uh, change them easily almost every day because these uh, bottles are really, really for free. So in the in the hopper, you can find uh, 2K PU-based, polyurethane-based, non-foaming, low viscous resin, and I love this kind of resin. No matter the the, the brand, every single manufacturer have this uh, kind of resin uh, and sell and provide this uh, kind of resin. I love this resin because when it's injected into the crack, it doesn't um, show foam. <clears throat> this foam really blocks the resin to flow in, in, inside the crack because the foam is, uh, when it touches the water, it blocks. Like we use foam to, to stop and to block flowing water. And it happens um, also inside the crack. So I really insist on using non-foaming PU based resin when we inject into the crack. Uh, okay, and I have produced this uh, adapter and its thread is, you know, it fits like Coca-Cola bottles so uh, it's really easy to um, to find another hopper if the one we used before is dirty or is destroyed or whatever. Smaller hoppers also uh, really help you to really help you to uh, observe the consumption of resin because again, when we inject into the really really small fine crack the consumption of resin is almost nothing. And sometimes it's hard to understand if the resin was injected into the crack or not. This container really helps you to understand. <clears throat> fourth, fourth, fourth question. So uh, the question is if I can start to sell your product. If you are the producer or manufacturer of some kind of resins and other products, so I would I would you know strongly say yeah, it's not that easy for me to start to become your reseller, 
because uh, I'm an applicator and I run my own business. I'm not a sales rep, right? However, uh, I'm thinking about, you know, making this kind of uh, video courses showing how to uh, use kind of resins for injection purposes only. So I'm not interested in floorings and other coatings. <clears throat> but uh, if it's injection resin, uh, and if we sign a contract that I will be able to produce this affiliate links, then uh, I find it interesting to, you know, to make a video course that will present your product, that uh, in which I will explain uh, step by step how to mix it, how to use it, how to apply it, how to avoid some uh, problems using uh, this this product, and then this this uh, course video course will be for free for everyone. But below the course there will be this link saying that if you want to buy it, you can buy it directly from this and that producer manufacturer and uh, I will get some commission from this manufacturer. So if you say that this kind of relation, business relationship uh, fits your idea, then yeah, this is my idea, how to start to monetize my business, my online business, but it's in the future, like one, one, one and a half year in the future from now, it's not for today. So we can spend this time, you know, preparing everything uh, if you find it uh, interesting. Okay, the free copy of 10 core principles of effective crack injection. You will get it uh, soon, like in 15 to 20 minutes and just after this uh, webinar is over. Uh, and if there is a new version, uh, you will be, of course, you will be, uh, you will get an upgrade. And I'm saying you, that uh, that you will absolutely uh, get this new version because I'm working on this at the moment. It's almost done, uh, but it's not yet. So within a week or so, you will get another email with this new version of this um, core principles for crack injection, which I love. Some of these ideas I already covered in this webinar, but there is like, some points that are, I find really, really, really uh, important. Okay, so I have answered some questions. Uh, I showed you the video. I showed you the free copy of, uh, I explained how you will get this, the free copy. So it will be basically, uh, you know, uh, emailed, the link to this um, core, core principles will be emailed within, let's say, 15 minutes from now. And now let's say if, Let's check if there is some uh, questions. It says that Cliff has risen his hand, but I have no idea how to how to say it. So, Cliff, can you type your question or whatever you want uh, to ask uh, at the moment? Can you can you hear me? Oh yeah, I do hear you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just uh, don't see exactly where the questions uh, require to be typed. Yeah, that's good. That's good question. So since we can hear each other, can you just say the question? Oh, yes, I have quite a lot. I'm happy to put them in uh, to type them and uh, email them or something. So if, we, or... if you could just shoot me an email, um, that would be great. So where is the where is the question? Um, I'm just try trying to see where we type. Um, I will just type uh, uh, um, a small question here, but I have quite a long list of about 10 or 11. Oh, wow. So uh, uh, I understand. So I hope I will manage to, you know, answer them. If there is, you know, a long list of questions, I will gladly and most probably, uh, you know, make another webinar. Uh, I will prepare myself a little bit to uh, find good, uh, good question, good answer. Okay, so what about pre-cleaning of the joint? You mean the expansion joint? Uh, or fissure or whatever you're injecting. Do you uh, recommend 
suggest or is it essential to absolutely yeah i didn't i didn't focus on this uh, because i was just you know explaining this uh, this uh, using of uh, injection packers so i didn't uh, come to this and i wasn't like saying step by step how to uh, inject how to seal uh, an expansion joint but absolutely uh, so my employees, as we speak in Warsaw, are cleaning expansion joint of almost 40 meters at the moment, and they are removing everything that's inside. So there is a plywood, a concrete, uh, some um, uh, previous uh, previous uh, things that were used to uh, seal this uh, expansion joint. Uh, we are absolutely removing everything that's inside to uh, first of all create the space to inject uh, uh, resin our resin yeah and then we need to make sure that the internal walls of an expansion joint on the right and on the left of this expansion joint are clean because we need the resin to really stuck to it glue to it and work with uh, an expansion joint as it changes uh, its uh, width during the year. So absolutely, uh, this is uh, necessary to make the in internal walls, concrete walls of, uh, uh, of the joint uh, properly uh, cleaned. Yeah. And I, I guess even more important when it's not something like an expansion joint, which is quite large, uh, but when uh, injecting microfissures uh, or whatever, then even more important to make sure that the joint is clean so that you get a travel, continuous travel of the resin, of the resin along, the, along mm -hmm. the feature. So, uh, yeah, when we can see that the this joint was, uh, you know, the leakages took place for years, not for months, but for years. And we can see some salts and some other things that are, you know, going out of this uh, joint. So after the, so first of all, we drill more holes per one, per one running meter of this, of this crack or of this joint. Mm -hmm. And then before we inject the resin, we try to use the same packers uh, and we inject water inside it to somehow clean uh, the internal walls of this joint with this water coming from packers, from the holes. <clears throat> to uh, so it makes this uh, space inside a little bit bigger. So this is like, this is the special case. We don't do it uh, all the time, but uh, yeah, it happened from uh, like, perhaps five times during my, uh, you know, during running this company that I made a decision to clean the joint, uh, the small joint, cold joint, uh, using um, water from the pump, uh, even before we have started, uh, where I started to uh, inject uh, the resin itself. Yeah. So right. I hope that this answer was uh, good enough. Uh, yet yeah, it is. Um, well, I, I think it'd be easier for you and uh, uh, avoids wasting everybody's time. If I uh, immediately after the webinar, I'll put all my questions down, take 10 minutes to put them down uh, and send you an email. I'm quite happy for uh, all the other participants to see the questions. They may, uh, there may be, the questions may be of interest for them and they may have experience to share. So, uh, so exactly. as far as soon as I get the answer, uh, your questions, I will produce my, uh, prepare my answers, and then I will shoot you all of uh, the people who took, uh, who signed up for this webinar, not only you who really uh, take uh, from some time to be able to join this webinar, but I will send to everyone who signed up your questions and my answer to these questions so we can all have uh, the ability to share this uh, knowledge. Yeah, what do you say? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, great. 
for for me for me it's perfect as well uh, even perfect that's that's great so that was it uh, that was this you know most important questions many people asked uh, the same questions uh, many times and that was the you know main main message uh, from me uh, tomorrow is first day and podcast first day so this webinar will be transformed into a podcast so, uh, Miguel, any questions? Hamid, any questions? Please. I don't have any questions indeed, but uh, I think it was very good. Uh, Mateus, uh, congratulations. Um, uh, Excellent. Well, yeah, I was, I was really me, stressed. It was, it was, I was excellent. Yeah. I was very surprised with the Coca-Cola bottle. I have to admit it. Uh, yeah. and it it's it's, has it's, its, its not, own you know, it's lit. not the commercial of Coca-Cola, but you can no, yes. find this kind of bottles <laughs> of course, yes. everywhere. And so it's easy to attach. And yeah. It's no, perfect. This, this, uh, this, of this, course, it could this, be Fanta. <laughs> but yeah, okay. absolutely. No, the, but the idea is great be because water. it is can too, uh, you, you can use it for once and then you throw it. And that's it. That's it. That's it. it. And so I've been using this kind of uh, hoppers for like three or four years now, and I don't buy any uh, hoppers. Any it's tank, six, any, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's six, uh, six liters. But the, with the thread, it's very, very smart thing, I think. So, yeah, I put and, this adapter on my own. I have it uh, made for using the stainless steel, so it's forever, mm -hmm. yeah? One, one will work even longer than the pump, I guess. Um, yeah, so, I find it really a good solution for, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, especially for crack, for, for crack injections when we really once again use small, really small amounts of resin. Yeah. All right. Have a great the rest of the day. Uh, to you. Thanks for being here. And I'm waiting for your questions, uh, uh, Cliff. And then uh, as soon as I get them, I will prepare my answers. And basically, uh, I end the meeting and I produce the podcast so we can uh, all hear it tomorrow morning. All the best to you. Ciao. All the best. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you very thanks much. Thanks for putting bye -bye. this together. Thank, Thank you. you very much. In two weeks, we will meet with several manufacturers of injection packers. They answered four questions about the market situation, their achievements, and the future of our industry. If you are curious about what your suppliers think about the industry, this episode is for you. Thanks for listening and I hope you tune in next time.